All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, we don't have a quorum, so we cannot make any decisions. We cannot adopt any resolutions this evening. What we can do, though, is we can hear the various applications, and you can then also pick up the copies of the comments from our village engineer, from our village landscape architect uh, consultant, and you can hear our comments here, and at least that way we can keep things moving, moving along. A month for you and for us. So at this point, that's what we're going to do. Uh, and the first, I, well, let's see, then the items, well, the items in the order that we were going to take them would be 2019-17 T-Mobile, 2019-12 uh, 8 Riverview Terrace, 2016-41 41D North Broadway, uh, 20. 18-1499 Bracebridge Lane, 2019-14 uh, 75 North Broadway, and 2019-16 27 North Buckout Street, Unit 12. So with that, well, T-Mobile was going to be a resolution, and there's nobody here representing T-Mobile, so there's nothing really to discuss. They had, there really were yeah, no comments. Yeah, they didn't really need to be for it. Um, they would have come, but right. you can't decide, so we'll just do it the next meeting. Okay. With that. All right, the next item then is 2019-12, Mark and Allison Weintraub, Kate Griffith, and Terrace. I'm just making an announcement about the two South Astor, not people. Oh, okay. Yes, we did have, we did receive one application, 2019-15 on the mark, LLC, 2000, 2 South Astor Street, but that item is not going to be heard this evening. So if anybody is here for that, it will not be heard at all. Okay. Um, I'm James. Um, we're back again uh, for 8 Riverview Terrace. Um, we have eliminated the proposed landscaping wall in the back and went with uh, two to one grading instead. Um, received a couple comments from uh, Doug's office, which we will be addressing, and the landscape architect. Um, they seem mostly concerned with the areas um, of the trees over there. Right. right. There's also that, yeah, there's yeah. a tree right in the middle where that, the outlet pipe is going to be running right through its, yeah. its canopy. Um, and that was one thing, but, and also I guess in the lower, the upper left corner of your property, which yes. would be what the southwest corner, because you, you have, you're creating a pitch that's now one on two, and mm -hmm. one of the comments was, how are you going to handle um, stabilizing that slope and what will be on that slope? Um, I think we were going to do possibly, um, was it the, uh, the matting on the slope? Um, I think, uh, I think you, you got the comments from... Yes our landscape architect and from our engineers, so you can address those. I think one of the things that should be um, made clear with regard to this project is, I noticed, Doug, in your comments back, I think, um, here we go. The reduction in flow is calculated to be approximately 9% up to the 100-year storm event. And so, so your your nine percent reduction at a hundred at the hundred year storm is it the same at various storms less than that? Pretty consistent. Okay. Eight or nine percent. Okay. So I think it just should be made clear to your neighbors yeah. and to your, the applicant that a nine percent reduction is really quite insignificant in this, and that they should not expect a major change in the flow that's going to occur in that yard and into the neighbors' yards. On a, on a hundred year storm, or even the one year storm, the one year storm now is on almost three inches of rain, and that's over 24 hours. But we don't get storms that that are three inches over 24 hours. What we're getting now is two and three inches in two and three hours. Mm -hmm. And so these flash storms, I mean, a nine percent increase, I think they should be aware that there's not going to be much change in, in what's going to happen in that backyard and into the dairy. At the neighbors' yards, just so that they're aware of that, because you know, yeah. we want them to come back to the village and say, "Well, wait a minute, we, we thought we were going to have no flooding after this." We were also considering um, possibly going with infiltration units um, this way to get rid of uh, some of the runoff from the lower storms, like the uh, the smaller ones, not the one years, or probably a little bit less. And um, well, can you do it there? I mean, I think the issue was that there's a lot of rock out there and that there really isn't any place for it to infiltrate. You can detain it, but 
it's really difficult to infiltrate anything if it's it's pretty much rot. Well, yeah, we we figured um, possibly not taking credit for it on the ca on the calculations, but um, I guess in reality, it would lose something to the ground. All right. Yeah, as I just said, because there were letters in here from the neighbors, from the yeah. Norquist and from the land, saying, oh, yeah, we're, we're all supportive of this because it's going to relieve flooding. And I think they should just be aware that it's, it's going to be very minimal. It's not reducing the volume at all. Okay. It's, yeah, it's not infiltrating yeah. anything. The wall is out. Even the trees? Yeah. Well, did they take the, I didn't think they took the tree well out because I thought there were comments. I thought you both that were going to take it out. Is the tree well in or out? Um, the tree well is going to be in. Okay. Right. That goes to the ARB? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, before they go to the, well, what do you suggest they go to the no, ARB? No, no, no. Go the, before they go to the ARB, the, the question is, I think our landscape architect said that that tree well is going to be within four feet of the trunk of the tree and that could have an impact on the roof system. So I think you're going to have to determine exactly where that tree well is going to be and make sure that it's approved by our architect and our engineer. Um, otherwise, you may just end up having to take that tree out. Yeah. And then you just have to do some remediation in terms of uh, some other plantings. Okay. Well, actually, the, the tree's coming out. The, the no, the, the no, tree's no, not coming out. No, the tree is not coming out. No, that's, the that's tree well's coming out. Okay. No, the tree well's not coming out either. That's the issue. If the tree well is shown at four feet from the trunk of the tree, and the question is, what kind of damage is that going to do to the root structure? And if it's going to do substantial damage to it, you may end up having to take that tree out anyway. Is that my problem, or is that is that is that a, a something to be decided upon by this, this yes. organization? Yes, it is. That's why we have a, landscape, a consulting landscape architect. It's part of the site plan. Can I, if I want to cut that tree down, can I do that? Uh, do you, you want to come up and take my microphone? Introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Mark Weintraub. Dude, this is so frustrating. Incredibly frustrating. I have that tree, that, that tree is the center of the backyard. So I'm going to have a tree well there. If I need a tree well, what you're telling me is I have to go to another organization? say that we have a consulting landscape architect and a consulting engineer we you receive comments from them on this matter now and the, one of the issues was whether that tree well is going to actually do damage to the root structure because it's an eight inch tree that's so close to the, the roots to the trunk of the tree that it could do damage to it serious enough that you may end up losing the tree anyway so you may want to consider removing the tree and doing something else some sort of other remediation but that is an issue that you have to decide what you want to do. But we're pointing out that there is an issue with that. And as part of the side plan, that has to be resolved. I'm done. But what does that mean exactly? I, I don't know. That's something, something for you to decide. I don't understand. Well, that's what you have to your consultants for you. Should discuss it with them, and then they can discuss it with our landscape board. And then I have to come back. Yeah, well, you, you can't make it. You can't make a resol uh, a. We can't approve a resolution this evening because we don't have a quorum. But there's also we understand there, there are issues to be resolved yes. before you make yeah. a decision yeah. anyway. So if those were all resolved, then at the next meeting there'd be a resolution. Sorry. Hi, I'm Allison Weintraub, also of the same residence. Um, so we, I'm trying to think about what we talked about last time and the hope for a speedy resolution for this backyard remedy that we're trying to provide for our neighbors. And I'm wondering the tree situation with the well, I don't remember us even discussing that last time because, right? Last time, we the tree well. I see. So the tree well is now what's gonna be debated for the next month or what's now the, un the outlying issues that are now going to be discussed over the next month. You have this memo that was given to your consultant from our, from our engineer, and also it contains comments from our consultant. No, no, I, I, I'm just those wondering, like, well, those are the issues. And those we can't resolve now? 
problem is they can't vote because they don't have a quorum. Yeah, we can't, we can't take action. The last this is this not here discussion. Either. So, so just, just so I understand, because I've never done this before. Oh, outstanding issues. So, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. We have to speak one at a time for the transcript. So, there's an outstanding issue of a brand new tree wall that was added since the last submission. It needs to discuss it with the, um, excuse me. Hello? Yeah. Yes, we're in. Nothing, we're waiting for you. Okay. Okay. Okay, bye. Um, so the tree wall needs to be looked at, and the tree wall, as proposed, our landscape architect has concerns about how it's going to impact that or damage the tree. So that has to be worked out with the landscape architect. So then here, so here's my question. So we've had a month between the first time we were here and now the second time. These questions were raised in that period between the two meetings, correct? Like in writing, you have these questions? No, no. The, the questions came out yes, uh, yesterday or the day before. Well, the, the point is, you submitted yeah. plans prior to the last meeting. We, our architect and our engineer reviewed those plans. We, as the planning board, reviewed those plans. There were issues that came up. Your architect and your engineer went back and changed the plans. So now we are making comments based on the revised plans. Right. And so all that happened uh, several days ago, where you made comments on the new plans, correct? So was there not an opportunity between that and today for us to then walk together to figure out about this tree well so then today we can resolve the issue instead of now, like I'm just wondering how we can move forward. I know Hillary is coming, which is great, but how can we just move this forward so we're not delayed another month for our backyard project to um, commence? You know, we don't want our tree to be damaged either. So there's every goal of doing this so we preserve a very beautiful highlight of our yard. Well, we can't take any action on it until our third member shows up. Of course. At that point, it's possible that we might be able to take action on it, but then it's going to be subject to all of these other issues being resolved prior to issuing a building permit. Okay, but then we, that would avoid us having to come back to a meeting, right? That's what I'm yep. trying to go through in a way that we can all work together constructively, knowing that we have mutual interests in moving forward. So that's sure. what I would like to do tonight. So if you want to take a seat then, because I think that's all. Pardon me? Two sets is all. So have a seat we'll, we'll get back to that. Next item is 2016-41 Karen and Alana Lewis, 41B North Broadway. If we get on, on this one. Why don't you wait until Yeah, we'll wait until let's pass on this one because <laughs> this, we're ready for a resolution on this one, right? And so there's, there's no need to make any So comments. just wait here yeah. until the other person comes. Sure. Okay. So let's move on, okay. One, two, three, four. 2018-14, Tracy Calvin and Gordon Fury, 99 Brace Bridge. Thank you. Schrader for Ferguson Modern Architecture, representing our clients, Tracy Calvin and Gordon Fair. We submitted um, a revision from the original um, planning board approval 
on this submission we are on this submission, we are um, presenting some modifications to that plan, addressing also some issues um, uh, that were noticed in the notice of violation and stop work. So we got uh, some comments from her. We are addressing those comments for the future submission. And um, we did have a question. One of the comments um, from the landscape architect is noting the location of additional proposed trees and shrubs should be shown um, on the plans. We don't have at the moment a site plan for the neighboring property. The, the new mitigation for the tree that has been removed, that we're proposing to remove, sorry, according to the arborist report, is going to be located in the neighboring property. Uh, we can locate or we can draw the symbols for the trees and the shrubs that we're proposing and they are on our mitigation plan. I just wanted to make sure that it would be okay if we do the same kind of symbol and representation that we use for the rest of the property. If we put it on a random spot next to our property and we keep the notes saying that the location and the species will be um, coordinated with the landscape architect. Would that be okay? Or we need to present um, a site plan for the neighbor. The neighbor would like to discuss with the landscape architect where to locate those trees. Right. Yeah, I, I'm okay with that, you know, working out with, with the neighbor in terms of where it's going to be. Um, any of the comments from any of the board members? Is the neighbor here? No. Yeah. Okay. That's one. That's a minor issue, as really, as far as I'm concerned. The major issue is the stop work order and why the stop work order was issued. Ed, do you want to just give a little background on why the stop order, stop work order? There was no permit issued for any of the approvals from this board, the garage, or the addition to the house. Excavation work has started. Um, the swale was moved into the wrong location through the trees. Um, and then it's what looks like a, a error was they, they put the cell fence in using a machine and damaged the roots around the trees in the, uh, along the aqueduct. Um, they trenched for the, the um, skip laurel on the, set on the south side with the machine as well, and it appears they damaged uh, some trees there as well. There's neighbor street, not a neighbor street kind of thing going on. I think they've got that well worked out. They just have to next time come in and make sure we have the neighbor's permission to make sure. There is a letter saying that the neighbor agrees to the mitigation of the tree. Okay. And again, and the takedown of the other one. And the takedown okay. on the other one. And that's all documented? That is, the, the agreement of the neighbor is documented. There is a new comment saying that um, they would like a letter saying that the neighbor agrees with the species that we're proposing. Okay. We've yeah. already talked to the neighbor. Yeah, that's, that's, they are that's okay. That's just to avoid the only thing that the neighbor is requesting is uh, if he could uh, consult with the landscape architect to see where in his property he could put the, the additional trees that we're proposing. Your it's one tree. Ours. ours okay. the, the village. No, I was to... no, the village. I mean, they know that we're consulting with them. She proposed the species that we proposed that are very similar to the one in the north of the property. And uh, he agreed with that. He may have like some discussion on one of the shrubs. We yes. proposed a tree and two, two shrubs. Okay. So then the only thing, not only the only thing, the thing that needs to be addressed that you haven't addressed tonight is the health and the, the damage, to, damage the trees. to the trees to the right. north. Right. And while you, okay. it, you submitted a report from the care yes. of the trees, that's your consultant. I would like to have our consultant, a, a separate arborist, issue a report and see how that report corresponds to what your um, uh, what your arborist has said. And we will ask Suzanne Nolan, our landscape architect, to recommend a, um, an arborist to go out there and inspect those trees and provide us a report as to what the damage is to those trees and what the prospects are for their survival. We'll have them contact their office. Okay. Okay. You will have Susan contact our office yeah, or the the tree, okay. the tree people will contact your office. So Somebody will contact your office so you don't go chasing it. Right. And then you you can you can follow up there. Okay. All right, so any other comments from board members? 
right. the civil comments were addressed with our civil engineer, and he'll take care of those. Right. Yes, I guess there's issues about the level spreader and about the concentration of flow onto the aqueduct. Yeah, we'd like to know what's going on. <coughs> Are you taking the water from up on top of the hill and bringing it right down to the aqueduct? Well, actually, what uh, the, the civil engineer, Hudson engineer, was at the site to review the mitigation done by the, the owner. Um, there wasn't a level spreader, and he evaluated what he's done, and we, he considered that it's actually helping the situation of the existing uh, French drain that is in front of the house. They have a lot of accumulation and flooding in front of the house. So the, um, the civil engineer agreed that that could be a good solution, but they agree also installing the spreader so the water doesn't dump in the aqueduct and floods the aqueduct. So actually, it's improving the situation that it is right it's now. It's improving the situation on his property, but what about the aqueduct? So that's what we're going to know. Well, we, we, I'm going to let them um, respond to that because it's not my expertise. But for what I, I talked to them, the spreader dissipates the flood into the aqueduct. And because this one right now is draining directly in the aqueduct, it will reduce that flow. So. They can let it he can address the comments. Yes, cause. that's fine. Right, but you, you want verification. So you want, don't you want verification from HEC that what they're proposing, and it's engineering verification of what they're proposing is yeah. will make the situation better on the neighboring property, not, <coughs> not worse. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's we'll okay. Them, we'll let them say that. Right. Okay. okay. Any other comments? Should I go out and get the water? Yes, let's go back. Thanks. We'll go back and then. so did you want to make any further comments on this with regard to the tree the tree well doesn't Hillary need to hear everything as I went over uh, before we updating this plan we had removed the uh, landscape retaining wall in the back um, just went for a two to one gradual slope instead to raise the grade up and added a tree well which uh, and that seems to be the controlling one of the controlling factors as well as um, the detention rate of the system. Well, I mean, it could be resolved. You know, you're talking about the shoe mm -hmm. but it could be resolved by moving the pipe. Yeah. Um, so another way. If we shift over to the left, just drop the pipe around and away from the tree, yeah. move it away from the tree. Okay. It, yeah, it's uh, um, according to the owners that tree has a very large uh, drip edge. So putting a tree well around that might uh, cut down on the area that we'd be able to use for the detention system. Can you shift the system over, away from it a little bit? Looks like you have some room. Could try. You look at just kind of shifting it a little bit, or maybe but if you increase the length of the two uh, on this side and then decrease the far one, you could probably just maybe shift it around and figure out how to get it in there. Yeah, couldn't it be run at, at less of an angle from the um, from the underground detention system you're proposing, you know, if you if you reduce that angle between the pipe and the uh, the underground detention, mm -hmm. then you can get farther away from the tree, and then you should have to put another uh, catch basin in, and then direct it around and down into the um, the uh, I guess the, the rock swale that you're proposing. Down there. Could do that. I mean, there are ways yeah. to do it, you know, without. That you can save the tree, pretty much. And the person doesn't have to get involved with changing the tree wall now, too. Mm -hmm. That's an issue. So, what, what do you suggest? 
we have a resolution to uh, yeah. subject to Han's comments, and this is on Han's comments. Okay. Yeah. So subject to Han's no comments. And no, and no, and no one's comments. Yeah. So there's no permits to to the tree wells resolved. Until it's resolved it further. Yeah. Okay. And okay. I think the tree well issue can be resolved then yeah. between Han and the landscape architect. And you. All right. Okay. Now you read the resolution. Yeah. Uh, whereas in June 2019, Allison Weintraub applied for site development plan approval to construct a stone retaining wall and a stormwater system at a property at Eight Riverview Terrace, and whereas the retaining wall would have required a coverage variance, so the applicant removed the proposed wall from her subsequent submission, and whereas um, Han Engineering reviewed the plans, and in a memorandum dated June 4th, identified a number of issues, most of which were addressed in the subsequent submission. And was applicant's stated goal in making the improvements was to mitigate stormwater runoff onto her neighbor's property. But according to the submitted calculations, the project will not result in a significant reduction of flooding on the neighbor's property. And was the village's consultant, Nolan Landscaping Architects, reviewed the proposal and made several comments in a memo dated July 1st, 2019. And was the planning board held a public hearing on the application on June 5th and July 3rd. And was the actions to type 2 action under CEQA and therefore requires no environmental review. Now, therefore, be resolved that the planning board grants the application for site development plan approval of the improvements reflected in the drawings entitled Site Plan Weintraub and Gilbert Residence, prepared by King Koppelman Gregory, last dated June 19th, subject to complying with the items listed in the Han July 1st, 2019 memorandum and the Nolan Landscape Architects memorandum dated July 1st, 2019. You see there's a pending change on the resolution. Yes, I initialed it. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Okay. You can keep one of those. Good well. Here we are. Thank 2016-41. 41D, North Broadway. Claudia Schrader for Ferguson Alone Architecture for our clients and on camera release. So we submitted again, uh, responding the letters and the comments from Hans Engineering. The, we received a new letter with two comments that we were uh, discussing with our civil engineer. We will take care of those. I think there were some comments from the landscape ar architect, but I believe, no? Uh, There's nothing on this. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that was the one we... No, but I... I, but I thought that... They did have they were... some recommendations, and one of the conditions is that they have to meet with Suzanne Nolan on site to right. comply with I'll the recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, what is that? Okay. I'll, you'll, you'll get a copy of it. I'll get a copy. Okay. Basically, you will have to meet with Suzanne Nolan on site just to confirm that all of the tree protection... Yes. And ...all the removals are appropriate. Is there any way of having access to the permits, the tree removal permits? According to the client, they removed some trees with a, uh, uh, with a permit. Uh, yeah, is, that an, is that part of the issue or not? No, the issue oh. is we want to make sure that if there's any more excavation being done. We're not sure what is proposed and what's been done because of the violation. Yes. We want Susan Nolan to make sure that tree protection is just where you need it. Okay. All right. All right. And I get that. By the time we go back and forth with the drawings, I think yeah. it's easier for you guys to take them out. Take care of it. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Any comments from any of the board? Any comments from anyone in the public? Mary Ann, you have a resolution on this? Yeah, I do. Whereas on uh, February 1st, 2017, Cameron and Alana Lewis received site development plan approval to construct two additions to their house at 41D North Broadway to legalize several undocumented structures on the property. And whereas on April 5th, 2017, the applicants 
receive revised site development plan approval to eliminate the proposed north addition and to modify the south addition. And as in June 2019, in response to a stop work order, the applicants applied for further revised site development plan approval to relocate existing hardscape and a retaining wall in the rear yard and to modify the stormwater system from the approved plan. Um, whereas Hahn Engineering reviewed the plans in, in a memorandum dated May 31st, 2019, listed a number of issues, most of which were addressed in a subsequent submission. And whereas Nolan Landscape Architects reviewed the plans and in a memorandum dated July 1st, made a number of comments. Whereas the actions type 2 action under seek and therefore requires no environmental review. Now, therefore, it be it resolved that the planning board grants the application for revised site development plan approval of the improvements reflected in the drawings entitled Lewis Residence, prepared by Ferguson Malone Architecture, and the set prepared by Keith Koppelman, Gregory Engineers, subject to one, complying with the items listed in Hans' July 1st, 2019 memorandum, and two, meeting with Suzanne Nolan on site and complying with her recommendations. Uh, can I have any motion? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, here, Thanks, Mary. You have a resolution for the for, let's go back to um, 2019-17 T-Mobile. Oh, yeah. okay. um, let me just explain to you what this is about. Oh, wait. Let me get on the mic. No, this isn't much. This is just a. This isn't actually. Um, uh, a, um, renewal, so this they don't need to be there. But but under under our code, um, the planning board is supposed to review these applications every five years to make sure that um, the equipment's still needed, the equipment of that size. So um, I prepared this resolution. Whereas on June fourth, twenty fourteen, the Planning Board granted a special use permit and site plan approval to T-Mobile Northeast to modify its existing wireless telecommunication services facility on Abbott House 100 North Broadway. And there has there been no changes to the, the WTSF since the 2014 approval, but Section 224-129 of the Irvington Zoning Code requires that all special permits quote, be subject to review by the planning board at five-year intervals to determine whether the technology applicable to WTSFs generally has changed such that the necessity for the permit at the time of its approval has been eliminated or modified. And whereas on June 13, 2019, T-Mobile wrote to the planning board to request that its approval be renewed and in support of that request submitted certification from T-Mobile that the existing facility is still in use and necessary for T-Mobile to provide its services within the village of Irvington and an FCC compliance report certifying that the existing facility complies with the FCC's rules and regulations regarding radio frequency emissions. Whereas the submissions were reviewed by the village's uh, WTSF consultant, Center for Municipal Solutions, which recommended the special permit be renewed and whereas the renewal is a type 2 action under the State Environmental Quality Review Act and therefore requires no environmental review. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Board extends the special permit for another five year period, at which time it should be reviewed as required by Section 224 129. Can I have a motion? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 It's approved. Do you want to take two copies? Oh. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. Next item is 2019-14, Jonathan Casilli and Kimberly Chow, 75 North Broadway. Good evening. Uh, Bill Wolf, William P. Wood Architects. I'm here with my clients, Jonathan Casilli and Kimberly Chow, in support of their application. Uh, they're proposing to build a deck at the rear of their house. It's approximately 280 square feet um, in place partially of an existing patio that's going to be removed. We did he receive a few comments from uh, Han Engineering yesterday. Uh, I spoke with Doug, submitted some revised drawings. They were fairly minor in nature. Um, most of them had to do with indicating the gap in the deck for water drainage. 
uh, gravel, which will be placed under the deck. Uh, there were a few additional comments from the landscape architect, and I was able to speak with her today and to clear up the confusion I had. And basically, she was looking for a snow fence detail along the property line, just as a visual barrier so people knew not to bump into these protected trees. My concern at first was I couldn't put a drip line around these trees and still access the yard, but she clarified it for me. And that's details on the plans and uh, has been noted. I think the other thing, too, is she, me she mentioned it. Are there any low-hanging, like, large branches from those trees that may interfere with the access to equipment? Yeah, I checked myself, and there are actually no that are substantially low, but I did put a note on the site plan just limiting deliveries to underneath the canopy, so they don't extend under the canopies, okay. just to prevent any potential. Any comments from any of the board members? No. Any comments from any of the audience? No. Mary, did, did we yeah, have a resolution? I, okay. I do have a resolution. It's one that I said okay. um, three. I actually done this is four. Minor enough issues that we can. Uh, whereas in July 2019, Jonathan Cassini and Kimberly Chow applied for a site development plan approval to construct a deck and walkway at the rear of their house at 75 North Broadway, which is located in the View Preservation District. And whereas Hahn Engineering reviewed the plans and in a memorandum dated July 1st, 2019, identified several minor issues with the drawings. And whereas the village's <coughs> consultant, Nolan Landscape Architects reviewed the proposal and made two recommendations in a memo dated July 1st, 2019. Planning Board held a public hearing on the application on July 3rd, 2019. The proposed improvements would not impact the view of the Hudson River from neighboring properties. It's a type 2 action under CEQA and therefore requires no environmental review. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Board grants the application for site development plan approval of the improvements reflected in the drawings entitled Exterior Deck Casilli Chow Residence, prepared by William B. Witt, architect, dated May 7th, subject to complying with the items listed in the Han July 1st, 2019 memorandum, and the Nolan Landscape Architects memorandum dated July 1st, 2019. Any comments from the members? Can I have a motion then to approve? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Approved. And the last item is. Oh, no. The oh. last item is 2019-16, Monica Richmond, 27 North Buckout Street, Thank you. Thank you. You're Sorry about that. Can I turn this down? Hold it for a minute. Okay. Monica Richmond is here, my client from River House, and she loves it. Okay. You know, the, the request is to enclose an existing deck and uh, make an exercise room and then a uh, deck off of uh, the master bedroom. I received the, the comments today, and there were two basic ones that, that I will address now. Uh, one was the drainage from this, and what I forgot to show on the plan is the there is an existing leader system and downspouts for this whole part here. That's the existing roof. The existing roof, and we're just extending the roof over. And uh, the leader is here, and it's a uh, full gutter. So we're just going to extend it and tie into the existing system. Is this, is this proposal is in the, the front? I'm sorry. Is this in the front towards the sorry. Well, let me tell you right. Let me first show you where it is. Okay. Here, there's the view to the river. This is number 12. It's the last one. Oh. The corner. It's right on the corner of the corner of the and Buckout. Correct. Buck it is the last unit right on the corner. Right on the corner. Okay. And the site is in the corner. So and the the next one was a we're in the uh, Susie Bob, maybe just hold the microphone a little closer oh. to you. Yes. Okay. 
we are in the view preservation zone, and I can tell you not one single unit of the 11 left can see this. It's, it's, it's not visible because it's in the corner, and this, that's the one line. If you looked at unit two, which is higher, they can, they can just see past that corner. And of course, all the others are higher and behind. Right. So no one, not, not even one, will can see them. And he can't, he, nothing from above, from? And it's from above. Right? What's yeah, no. Uh, yeah, see, this is low, and here's the next deck, and that's, that, the best way to show you that is, If I'm out on uh, the street looking south, you see that uh, Monica's second floor you know, hides it, and the, the next potential deck is here, and they are back there and even up further. So physically, it's not possible for any of the existing units to. Uh, see the addition and block of view. Well, all the windows on the third floor of your existing west elevation belong to Miss Richmond, correct? That's correct. So there's two little windows that are two over two and then the two yeah, large they're windows. They're all existing. They're all, exist yeah, right. they're all existing, but they all belong to Miss Richmond. So, so this, this roof is really not impacting other than your client's view, actually, because your client. Yeah. Is the only yeah. one who can see these uh, windows. Who can see this window. I think the, I, I'm, does anyone have any questions on this matter? I think the only other question that came up, Bob, was with regard to the original approval for River House. Was there anything in the documents that said, oh, I'm sorry, from the village's perspective, I guess, the approval from the village? whether there could be any changes made to the exterior. And I don't know, Ed, were you, did you have a chance to research, you're still researching that? Okay. Back, back then, there wasn't resolutions there in the minutes, so it was more than okay. okay. But we have been in front of the uh, condominium board, and they approved it. I understand. Oh, I'm sorry. I understand that. I, I'm, I'm talking about from mm -hmm. the village's approval for River House, for the yeah. construction the of that project. Approval. Yeah. Was there anything in there that said there were to be no changes to the exterior uh, elevations or whatever? Um, Bob, yes. Uh, I, I don't know. I wasn't here in 1989 when it was um, built, but there. Yes, that's true. <laughs> I know, which is why I asked you to help me on this one. Thank you. Um, but there have been two changes, so I don't, and I, I presume yes. that they were done properly. So I don't know if it was checked then about that. But there was one. Um, there's been two decks. Uh, enclosed, so I would presume it was done properly, and that it, maybe somebody had checked the minutes then, and it was allowed. Well, I have to go back and look. I wasn't okay. on the board when those well, were done. So, yeah. But that was there was there was precedent, so presumably it was allowed. All right. Well, we just want to confirm that. And any comments from anyone in the audience on this matter? No. <laughs> um, no, I, I think once we can confirm that, I don't think there should be any issue, right? That you're okay with. The dream yep. as, as you show us. So yes. It should be good, Bob. So I think we'll have to bring you back next month once we confirm that. Anyway, we can expedite it a little. Or? Well, I don't, I don't, we didn't prepare a resolution for this evening because oh. of those issues. So I think one. one up the plans. I'm sorry. Spruce up the plans. Yeah, which you'll have to do. Is that already? And okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now all the also the condo okay. the condo association might have something in there minutes from. The original. We have a letter from them. No, no, she's talking about, about whether there was any limitations changes. on changing yeah. the building. Yeah. Um, yep. I'm not sure if there was, but a, um, quite a few years ago, 
they actually did make a resolution on if you wanted to make any significant changes, and it went through um, rules that you had to with the condo. So presumably they, they did that so that that was the first step if you wanted to. So you for example, uh, insurance, making sure you have proper insurance and things. Right. I was going to say that I think we're looking at it from I think the, the village's the original approval side, right. not from the condominium side. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that's it. Is there any way we can find that answer? Can we go back to the records? Ed's, Ed's we're working on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Ed's looking through the okay. minutes. We'll see if we can find something in the minutes from the original. Okay. 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 See you next month. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion to. Oh, I'm sorry. We have minutes from June. Any comments? No, can I have a motion then to approve the minutes? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes are approved. Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.